everybody. I am Liz Pre with purefandom.com, joined by my Pure Fandom co-founder, Meg Bonnie. Hey, guys. Hey, hey. And we are so happy to be bringing you another Wizard World virtual experience with the magician's Stella Maeve. Um, before we bring her out, I just want to give you a quick rundown. Um, today, we will feature this free Q&A and panel rewatch party following. And um, for all of you fans out there, virtual photo ops and live video chats will take place on December 6th um, at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Plus recorded video messages and autographs will be on sale all throughout the week. So make sure you check those out. And immediately following this live interview, um, we will be watching some of our favorite clips of Stella and the cast of the magicians from our virtual panels back in April and August. All right, everyone, put your virtual claps together, your heart emojis, your smiley emojis for uh, the wonderful Stella Maeve. Hey. Hey, girl. Woo. How's it going? Good. How are you guys doing? Good, good, good. It was as well. best as we can be, right? Yes. Right? We're still alive. So there's that. I know. Yeah. Well, I was as I was reading that, I was like, April and August. Was that five years ago or just yeah. a couple of months ago? Like, okay. Mm -hmm. five Different years lifetime. Ago. Right. <laughs> absolutely. Like, absolutely. Like Carol Baskin's time ago. Yes. Yes. I know, right? <laughs> Gosh. But I was going to say lover, but I don't. Right. But loved the so binge. Intrigued. Loved what? the distraction. Loved yeah. the distraction of everything. Loved Exotic Joe. <laughs> loved him. <laughs> Well, we love that we get to come together virtually despite all of the craziness. And you participated in not one, but two virtual panels. And looking back, like, what has it been like to connect with your cast members and fans virtually during all of this? It's been so cool because it, it's kind of like our only form of communication during this kind of crazy time, except that Hale is renting a spot up the street from me. So we'll go on walks and socially distance in the neighborhood. So that's been really like a lovely treat. Oh, um, yeah, but other than that, it's been really nice. It's been, you know, this was the year I was like, okay, cool, I'm gonna do all the cons and like, and then it was like COVID-19. Oh. And I was like, we're not, <laughs> we're gonna do this. Uh, but it's really cool. Cause we found like a good middle ground and a good medium. And the fact that we get to utilize this and do this and still interact with fans and still, get to you know see each other and reminisce on like the good times it's it's worth it it's great that's super fun and I know fans are gonna love being able to chat with you um as we have you know chatting offline before we started so that's really exciting yeah. Yeah. um about your character so I am a huge Julia fan I loved her from the start loved her Thank every you. step of the way um Thank just you. have to ask what was it like going from kind of an outcast in the magical world taking her character your character from an outcast to a goddess to just like a all-around awesome leader of the group um it was I remember the beginning was hard because all of my stuff was shot sort of separate from everybody else so she kind of had her own journey and her own storyline and it was really segregated from the rest of the group and as much as Julia felt um it, it, I had like my frustrations with her in general too because she kept it was like trial and error and she went through all of these all of these things and all of these emotions and all of these crazy struggles and so my dog is crying sorry we've all been there girl <laughs> um, uh so yeah so it was it, i remember there were points where i was like frustrated because i was like Ugh! like uh, but i but i don't think she would do this or like i uh, this doesn't make sense to me or blah, blah blah but then you know when you when you play it out from the end like in the long haul it was all learning lessons for her to fully become herself. And she had to go through like the hardships and, and the frustrating things and, um, you know, like not getting into break bills and all that stuff to sort of find her resolution at the end, which I think made it that much sweeter. But in the moment, I remember feeling sort of segregated from everyone because I was like, man, like, I don't, I don't see any of you guys until like the end of the season. And it was kind of like that for the first three years. I didn't really work with any of the regular cast members until till like November. And then we would finish in December. So it was like always with, which was, which was also super fun. Cause like I got to, you know, play with a lot of guest stars and a lot of people that I wouldn't normally, but I was, I felt like a missing link from the crew, you know? Yeah. We forget that on the viewer's side of 
um, you know, we think you guys are just all hanging out together all day. Yeah. And it's like, unless you have a scene together, you're not necessarily yeah. around each other. We had like two separate units too, for the first two years. So like we would both be shooting at the same time, but different, you know, they would be like as one group and then it would be me on my MO. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Um, we will get to the fan question, guys. I see him coming in through the chat. Um, a lot of you are watching from Boston, Chicago, Dallas, Atlanta, Romania, Canada. You guys Ooh. are watching from everywhere. This is awesome. Um, but um, before we get to your questions, we want to get through a few of our own because we're also super fans. Um, did you have any of any storyline particularly that was your favorite? Oh, yeah. The goddess, the goddess storyline. Yeah, that I was my like, absolute <laughs> season three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trying not to be biased, but I was sort of waiting for that the whole the whole two first seasons. You know, I was like, wow, like what's it gonna happen? You know? And yeah. I thought we were gonna get to live in that space a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, but that didn't it didn't uh it didn't go as the books did exactly. You know, she turned I remember in the books she was um she didn't speak for like a long period of time. I thought maybe we were gonna get to like experiment with that. And you know, they did it a little bit differently to translate it to TV. Uh, but I, re yeah, the goddess, the goddess storyline, easy. That's Absolutely. Awesome. Who doesn't want to play a goddess? I know, right? Totally. <laughs> like ethereal and like, uh, you know, talking to animals. I was like, yes, this is like, I'm in my zone. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So we do have a fan question um, that didn't come through on the chat. It came through on my cell phone from a super fan, aka my mom. So hi, mom. Kay. Hi, mom. Um, she wanted to know if you kept any props or costumes from the show. I kept a lot of sweatpants from, from wardrobe from our costume department. I stole a couple of those. And um and I kept the, I wore a onesie in season five when uh, we did a Christmas episode and I was extremely pregnant in real life. And um, I kept that onesie and I still have it and I'm saving it for when I have my second child, round two. That's yes. awesome. Those are very COVID friendly <laughs> takes there. Perfect. <laughs> well, Liz, it. do you want to ask one of the fan questions that came in that wasn't related to me personally? Yes. Yeah, I don't think um, any of these people are, you know, siblings or parents, but, oh, no. um, <laughs> okay, let me see. Okay. Oh, we already answered favorite storyline. So we got that one. Um, this one is from Rainbow Bright Eyes and um, Rainbow would like to know, Stella, what is your favorite thing about being a new mom? Ooh, gosh, um, my favorite thing. You can say the onesie. We won't judge it's, you. I can say, I can say <laughs> the one. pants. It's, so, it's pants. so cool. It's so, there's so I, I don't know if I can like pick just one, but yeah. it's pretty. It's pretty amazing. It's like the coolest. It's maybe like the coolest thing I've ever done. <laughs> right? Like you get you created life, girl. It's like, so and cool. they love you at this stage too. Like you. you're the coolest. I know. Mm -hmm. I know. That's maybe that's like the coolest. They, like the fact that you get to like somebody just loves you no matter what you know they like they look up to you and she's just like so cute and so cool although she's very sassy you know like when me and Ben are acting silly and stuff she's like she gives us so much brows and so much so much hand already like she has her eyes pop and she's just like All right. what are you guys doing and I'm like what I'm like you're supposed to be more cuddly you're just a baby like, I know. she's so independent she's so cute but yeah it's wonderful I love it being a mom rocks. Mm -hmm. You guys know. Oh yeah, it's the best. Oh yeah, it really best is. Ever. I'll never sleep again, but it's fine because. Oh yeah, sleep is best. dead. <laughs> sleep is dead. Yeah. Sleep died with the magicians for me. So I was like, everyone's right. like, you're never gonna sleep. I'm like, used to it. Hit me. Yeah. Like I got this. Mm -hmm. For sure. Okay, we have. Let me see. Um, oh, before we go, um, I want to make sure we shout out. I know that everything's weird right now. I'm not even sure if sets are opening. I know some are, some aren't, but we would love to hear where we can find you in the future or any other projects that you want to plug. There's some things in the pipeline, but my, my dude, my hubby, Ben Wadsworth, he is actually, uh, he's premiering on an, uh, 
new Brian Cranston show on Showtime called Your Honor. And that's on the fifth. So you guys should check it out. He's in the first three episodes. Um, I'm not going to say anything else, but he's like, the show revolves around something that happens with him. Dum, dum, dum. Oh, I need, I need a good mystery. We just finished it's like, the Undoing. Yeah, it's a good limited series. I think it's like an eight episode limited series. Showtime. And what was the, the show name again? It's called Your Honor. Your Honor. Got it. Brian right, Cranston plays a judge. Oh, good mm. casting there. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take it. He's so right? brilliant. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I just. I love that. I need to rewatch Breaking Bad. I it was. I was just I gonna say it. I watched Breaking Bad for the first time. He showed it to me. He's like, "You got? I've never seen it. You have to see it. It's. I mean, it's incredible. Right. So good. Yeah. And how do you say no to that? Right. I know. Yeah. You know. <laughs> like, well, Brian thank you so him. much. It was very, very fun to talk to you, just as a fan. And I know other you fans are gonna are have awesome. a great time talking to you too. Yeah, yeah, it was so much fun. Yeah, that's the 6th, December 6th. We can hang, I can do live chats, all sorts of fun stuff. Yes, so December nice 6th at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, guys. And those are the virtual photo ops and live video chats. Come and hang and, with me. Yes, she's amazing, as you can see. <laughs> mm-hmm. Super fun. All right, well, we're going to kick it off and do some clips of Stella. So um, at the panels from earlier in the year. So make sure you hang out give some hearts, check out those um, recorded video messages and autographs that are also on sale throughout the week. And thank you again for joining us. That was so fun. Woo, thank yeah. you for you having have you. a favorite cut Bye. out there. Um, and how was it like working with the, the choreography with that and kind of syncing up? Flying the moon, destroy. Oh yeah, what was that one? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of this. <laughs> <laughs> no, it reminded me of it reminded me of that scene in Wedding Crashers when when Vince Vaughn pretends to have lost like he can't hear and he can't speak and he's like he's like talking to Owen Wilson and he's like you know like, he's like okay well cakes and then we'll buy it like that's what you and Marina were like it was like a star on our palm we have to like gather it and then draw a star and then drag the <laughs> this, this action felt. You know, like but we did have a set. We had a we had a separate tuck choreographer to answer your question. Kevin uh, Kevin Lee mm. um, was our tuck choreographer from day one, and he is like a world champion tutter. And he he <laughs> sends us videos and shows up on set to make sure that we're doing it right. And I mean, I've never been able to do his tuts justice. I have very the dexterity that that. It needed. I, I would just with my face. I would <laughs> yeah. cut it, and uh, you know. But he's extremely talented, and we were really lucky to add that element to the show. Um, I, I remember before, like before we shot the show, before the pilot, Sarah had emailed all of us videos of tutting because in the book it just says in like intricate hand movements or something sure. like that, and like didn't think twice about that. And then we booked the show and then she sends us this email that has all these YouTube videos of people tutting. And she's like, this is what it's gonna look like. And I was like, call my agents. I'm like, I'm done, I can't do this. Like on my hand, I can't like <laughs> done, no. Cause it was like the most incredible and none of us are that good. Hale might be, no, I no. think Hale's the best. I'm the worst. Well, Olivia, all those vitamins, on me. the windy, throwy things that you, I don't know. Oh, I can do that stuff or like my nipple twisting, but. Complicated. <laughs> I didn't do that much magic over the five years. Oh. Too. Like looking back. But yeah, I there, there wasn't hmm. magic. Yeah, Olivia did a bunch. I know Stella, you had a ton as well. Um, any any hard ones to, uh, stand out to you, Stella? Gosh, yeah. They were all really All fun. of them. They were <laughs> in the beginning of the series, like it was really cool and I loved how delicate it was and sure. it was awesome and, and we got to like experiment with some really cool and then as the series progressed it became like voguing and it was like voguing meets pop and lock <laughs> it's not like i don't i can't like i don't know what's happening but I, there's no way i can do this and not look like a fool <laughs> <laughs> there was a nice part as the series progresses we're supposed to be getting better with magic so i'm like okay <laughs> 
I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Well, how. there was a nice part. We all got like, it, there was a point like in the beginning of this year, like we all were doing our own separate tuts. And then like the last two seasons, there was so much cooperative magic mm. that we had to call each other on that tuts wrong. I mean, it was excruciating to get the timing of the tut <laughs> down with everybody. I'm like, you're doing that with your index finger? I'm not doing that with my index finger. What are you doing? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. I liked the daintier, like more yeah. like, you know, whimsical, like- Sparkly. Ballerina, like yeah. I like that. Yeah, I'm oh. good at dainty. Yeah, the World Seed one was tough. The World Seed one looked hard. <laughs> I, I blacked out. I don't even remember it. By that time we had tutted so much as a team, like I was, I don't know what was happening. Summer had to explode a wall in the last season. <laughs> I was like, hey girl, what's that tuck gonna look like? <laughs> 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 the wall exploded and we had to get it in one take. And it was it was just it was just a reflection of Margot's extreme power. It was it was a <laughs> all my tuts because I never got the emails for the tuts. And and so I would just make mine up on the day. <laughs> So you stole everything and you made up the tuts. <laughs> oh, the things you learn on, on Zoom calls. Well, I mean, you know, I grew up in this industry. I grew up. I mean, I started auditioning in, when I was a teenager. And I um, there were conversations pretty early on in my early 20s with agents and managers around, like, the, the strategy of what, how, how and when to take a gay role and the effect that that would uh, have on your career yeah. because it would mo more likely than not pigeonhole you and prevent you from expressing your actual range as an actor. And I don't fundamentally believe that. And I think that the industry is slowly changing. And in the last six years or so, we've seen a lot of change for the better. Um, I don't think that I would have imagined that I would have been able to play um, a character like Elliot on a show that skews somewhat mainstream um, in my adult life. I don't think that I don't think that that was a reality for me uh, in in my in my head. Um, but I'm really grateful that I that I did get to play Elliot. And um, yeah, I, I think that I think Elliot may may have been part of a larger wave of of change that's continued over the last five or six years and. There are a lot of fantasy television shows now that have a queer character battling similar issues. And uh, I'm not suggesting that I started that by any means. Elliot is a composite of a lot of other characters that already existed in and of himself. Um, his last name, Wa, is taken from Brideshead Revisited uh, by Evelyn Wa. Um, so, so he is sort of like a, a literary composite in and of himself. But um, I'm certainly happy to see that the, the trend is shifting and evolving um, as we as, as time passes more and more. Yeah, well, well said. And we see it a lot in the comments just right now. Uh, this is from uh, Nimus Spectre. I love the queer representation. It's part of everyday life in this series. It's less gay role or queer roles as much as just a role. It's a person, yeah. you know? I was um, gonna say, it was, I remember reading one of the episodes and um, uh, it was, um, one of the characters, it was before Candace came in, it was one of the characters that I was working with that me and Richard were working with um, okay. as a part to do the conjure spell with Jade too, actually. Yeah, so and I rem Sorry? Silver. Silver, exactly, there you go. Mm -hmm. uh, but before, but the, in the description, nothing was put that this character was supposed to be trans or supposed to be any type of way, it just was a mm -hmm. character. And then when we all got to work that day, it was like, it was just like, it was normal, you know? And she was telling us how she transitioned when she was like, like way later in life. And I remember just thinking like, I, I think me and Sarah had a conversation about that where it was like, it was something that like didn't even need to be talked about. It just like, there were just pieces of it laid throughout the series. And it wasn't like um, something that needed to be made a spectacle of or, or something that needed to be um, explained. It was just self-explanatory. It was just like, oh yeah, this is the world that we're creating and that we're building which is much like the world today is just what you see is what you get. And it's not, you know, this um, thing that sort of needs to be like pre-mandated or, or ex explained, which I thought was pretty cool. I just thought that was really awesome. Yeah, I, yeah. I love that. So I think about that a lot with the magicians and the more that we see on, on TV and films now is that we're starting to steer away from 
um, oh, this character is a character because they're they're trans, or this character is a character because they're LGBT plus. It's they're like, just no, a this character is a character because yeah. they're a great character and they're yeah. a freaking yeah. person. And like that's yep. what defines them as who they are as a person and as a character and as a part of the story and not like this, like, you know, they are blank. It's like- Not a they spectacle are, are. to be pointed out and like, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. I yeah, I think, I think it's super valuable. If anyone hasn't seen it, go watch Disclosure. It's a really beautiful documentary and it's really important, I think, based on, uh, and, and just to give credit to like our writers creators, I think they really tried to honor that and shift that, like the false narrative that we've been, you know, living in for a, a long time. And, um, and in Disclosure is something that they kept pointing out, specifically Candace actually, about how there's a lot of, uh, a lot of times the role is, um, they really point out the fact that like whatever, um, that that she's transgender and instead of just having her as a person. As a woman, oh yeah. yeah. And it just, um, so I, I'm grateful that shows like this exist that shift that narrative. And I think it's it's continuing to shift. And you know, in, in the story of magicians, Fillory is that escape, you know, specifically uh, for Quentin and, and a lot of the other characters. And so, Rico Miscreants is just wondering, and you know, with everything that's going on, what is your own personal fillery? Uh, what have you been doing to sort of escape a little bit uh, from things that have been going on? I thought this was sort of an interesting way of asking, like, what's what's up? <laughs> um, well, yeah. can I just jump in? Yeah, on that? yeah, yeah. You know, there's a there's a side of me that feels that in many ways, when this started, this was kind of fillery. You know, the the fact that the the world and the pressures and the kind of uh, anxieties that come with day-to-day -day living, the FOMO, the kind of competing on social media, the feeling of like, am I missing out on a great job? Is my agent doing the right job? All that kind of poof disappeared. And yeah. instead I was home with my wife, my loved one, the most important person in my world. There's another anxiety taking its place, but the level of day-to-day -day anxiety has definitely dropped for me. I don't know if anyone else feels that. Yeah, it's it's a great it's a great message of sort of like you have to take care of your home, like work on you and your family and yourself first before you can do. I mean, literally anything else, which I think is like it's kind of, it's it's funny. It's, it's very kismet in its own sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes me want to say like, oh, Jade, sorry. No, go ahead. Oh. Um, <laughs> I, I would like to pause. I'm just, right now. Yeah, I'm waiting. Yeah, I'm waiting so for each one. Right now. <laughs> so we'll, like, we'll talk after. Um, <laughs> we will, but you know, just because we would anyways. Um, <laughs> but I would posit is that my interpretation of of the books and of the show is that uh, that Fillory is seen to be the escape from depression, but the Fillory isn't a, an escape from depression. It's the idea that you can by removing yourself physically from a place that you can escape your own mental health issues. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something that we find that even when characters go to Fillory who are struggling with things, that those struggles still exist within them. And um, it was never Fillory in the first place, it was just them. And so for me personally, like being in lockdown, um, it, it, it kind of mirrors my own journey in lockdown, which is I, I started going back to therapy virtually, you know, cause I was like, oh wow. Like Sel was saying like dealing with, with your own self and there's not as many distractions in your family and your home and being like, what do I need to work on? And I was like, yeah, no, there's no place that I can go to escape the reality of, of my mental health issues. And so I have to like, it's really hard. It's so much easier said than done. It took me a really long time to finally make that appointment. I'll tell you, it was like scary for me. It really was. Um, but yeah, so in a way, my virtual therapy is my fillery. Um, and also being in my pod in the backyard with my dog. Yeah. If we wanted a more literal answer, I've been finding joy in little things. Like I have a little pod in the backyard. I sit there with my dog and my tea and like my Funko Pop. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's like my own little fillery because there are yeah. places you can bring, I just want to say also, there are places you can bring yourself physically that are healing. I don't want to say like, there's nowhere you can go. I just mean, it's good to like deal with those things. But um, yeah, I just travel to my pod and my dining room and my, my sitting, my living room 
and I bring my little stuff with me and it's yeah. like cleansing for me mentally, just being in like a, like a spot 10 feet away. So it's about finding those little spaces for yourself, I think. I was gonna say having a yard too has been so nice. And even for people that don't have a backyard or a garden, Going on walks. Ben, ben, my partner, he's never seen this. Well, this is way less deep than that. I was gonna say. We, did, we, he's never seen the uh, the Sopranos. So I've shown, I'm showing him the Sopranos for the first time. So we're like binge watching shows. That's so awesome. we're just like jumping, diving into like the. You would call that thing. I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Thank you. I know, but I'm like. Yeah. Uh, no, honestly, to, to just piggyback on what everybody else was saying um i think yeah there's a beautiful, beautiful thing there's an inside joke happening i missed it no so, people are people are excited they're it's we're on the edge of our seats that's why i, uh, <laughs> I love it, I love it. <laughs> they just want to fight more that's what it is um no but i um yeah just to piggyback on what Stella was saying what charles was saying Brittany, sure. whatever um <laughs> 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 anyway, my mental health, whatever. <laughs> Come on, I deal with your mental health every day. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're kidding. We're kidding. It's a serious thing. He does. Um, he does. But um, you know, I think there is something like really beautiful about uh, delving into shows and having that beautiful escape. But also, the thing yeah. that I realized, and uh, we talked about this before jumping on, is um, joking about how much I was traveling and moving constantly. But I think part of it was because I was seeking for something to fill something, like to fill a void. And I, like Charles sure. said, in this time, all of the outside circumstances have been completely removed, whether good or bad. It's been removed um, from us. And so what we have left is ourselves. And it's been a time for me of deep introspection and mindfulness and really finding like I, I always thought oh well if I do this then like then I'll create value in my life or I'll, I'll feel better about something instead of just feeling good about who I am and just sitting and being with myself and I think that's for anybody that needs to hear that today I think that is the magic it's like being able to feel okay with whatever it is dealing with mental health or depression or anxiety or or just challenges because there are real human challenges right now to to like know that that's happening and still be okay to be okay with ourselves and to to find that peace within ourselves i think has been has been my my own little filtery amen Thanks. hail <laughs> hail harvey um things things that you've been um, using to sort of escape if you will yeah i feel like you know um that piggyback on that that uh, finding, you know, before this, I was like traveling, like trying to like try new things, go to different places, and then being forced to sit in your own thoughts and sit with yourself and then think, what am I doing? You know, it's like, what am I doing with my life? What's going on? And then it made me really kind of connect more with my family, where like, you know, before it's like, oh, I'm, I'm gone for six months and I'm filming, and then I see them when I see you. And then being home and being that your pod is like your core family and whether that's a family that you choose or a family you know blood family what whatever that is um it really kind of put things in perspective like i was like wow this is this is the core of things like this is what matters you know this is the where it stems from like this is what's important when you go home this is all that matters you know not like the car that you're driving not that you went to or whatever you know it's like this is what really matters is that core so that's what i realized throughout this um whole process and journey that we're going through and um i also you know more importantly, made banana bread. So. <laughs> <laughs> banana bread, yeah. <laughs> banana, um, banana bread feels like important. It's really so. good. No, yeah. not, <laughs> no one was talking about like, I was making banana bread. Harvey, I, was like, yeah. I, commend, I commend you on your baking because that was like a vow I was going to do and I have not done it. So no, I, I put it off because I was like, I'm not going to be cliche. And then after doing my you know realization, like just Zen, and I was like, you know, I'm going to try banana bread. Um, what do they have? Like a mixer. What do you put in it, Harvey? What do you put yeah, in banana my bread? Favorite bread is uh, a, a cup of sour cream. Oh, that's what makes it moist. I know it sounds gross because I read. I was like, "Ew, that's disgusting." I'm not well, doing it. Sounds that. Good. It sounds disgusting when I read it, <laughs> and, then I, and then I did it, and I gave like you know family and friends like dropped off at their door and like rang the bell. And it was like creamy, yeah. moist. It's just like it's yeah. like buttery and moist and people are like this is the best thing you've ever baked and I was like 
thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Awesome. No, yeah, go for it. Yeah, I know you're making us all hungry on the on the chat. <laughs> I'll I mix. Didn't, I didn't I'll know mix. Twitch had a banana bread banana emoji, bread. but no. <laughs> I'll send um, my address later. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it for your birthday, not like Britain. Oh, Ooh, so very good. That was really good. Damn. <laughs> you know, I, I was going to say, like, to add on to what Harvey was saying, just about sure. sitting and Jade as well, like sitting with yourself, realizing what's happening. This pandemic's also shown me personally, like, a lot of uh, interpersonal people's just kind of like what people value and like what Harvey was saying like with family or with whatever it is and it's it's quite interesting how when there's like a pandemic on on in our hands like just how how people's true colors come out and how you kind of you see who's really um selfish and and, and who's like not it's kind of what and being like a new mom too it's like whoa like you really have to think about other pe you have to think about your neighbor you have to think about other people and there are so many people that don't it's kind of just like very revealing and very wild to like be on this journey with with a newborn because you know she's seven months it's like our duty to protect her and like care <laughs> for her and you know literally we have to we have her life or her life in our hands and it's wild to to see how many people have um reacted to that and and said to us like well we don't want a social distance well like we don't want to and i was like well too bad <laughs> like like right. the youngest baby to get it was like five months old at the pediatrician so it's like it, it's it's interesting to see to see where people um, put their value and and how sometimes it's not just about you but it's also about your neighbor and the people around you and like somebody else's child or your grand or somebody else's grandfather or, or anything you know yeah yeah it's wild look at our moral compass of like totally that's you know, the perfect mm -hmm. like yeah if you're going out and about with no mask on like. It's not I've just, had a bunch of people you know, be like, well, we want to see the baby, but we don't want to social distance. I'm like, well, have you gotten a test? Like, what, too bad? Like, we can't, not going to swing it. Like, you know, family or not, it's like, we're just being really, really careful just because like, you know, we want to make sure we protect our baby from not being sick. Yeah. And it's interesting because you'd think everybody else would be on board, Ooh. but it's, it's wild to just see how many people are just sort of, um, not concerned with it or or not thinking about it it's just it's interesting how everybody's it's sort of this pandemic's affecting everybody differently it's it's mm -hmm. wild to see how um how everybody's uh, reaction reaction to it is just different yeah mm -hmm.